Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. We really appreciate it. All right, business owners. So there you are with your brick and mortar. You are super excited about all the things that you're doing, and business seems to be going well. But what next? You have a great business, a great product, and a phenomenal service. But how do you scale that? Where do you go? What do you do? And who can help you? Well, today I'm going to introduce you to somebody who does just that. You all, please say hello to my friend, Mr. Steve Lebroder. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. All right, so Steve, let me tell you. You heard the intro. There are businesses out there who need the help. So first of all, tell us where you are. Tell us the name of your business and tell us what you do. All right. So I'm in Palm Harbor, Florida. We work with local businesses uh, nationwide. The name of the company is SEO727.com. has absolutely nothing to do with airplanes. It has to do with the area code we began in. Nice. Okay. I like that. <laughs> so a little shout out to the area code people. Whoop, whoop. So <laughs> what is it that you do? How do you help these local small businesses or good businesses get better and great businesses? What did you say? Dominate. I love Dominate. that. For sure. So we do it using the entire customer journey, um, mm -hmm. which consists of people being made aware of their brand making sure they can actually find them once they're aware of them, uh, making sure they can trust them to do business, mm. making sure that things are in, in place, whether it's online or in person, that makes it easy for them to pay them. And then, well, of mm. course, we have to have a system that's going to give them a way to talk about the great experience they've had so right. that they can uh, tell others about that experience, basically a review. And that leads other people to trust and shortens that funnel to let more people in. I love that so much because a lot of us as small businesses, we don't really know all the whole parts of the customer journey. And we kind of get stuck in the do part versus the attracting part. Now, you work primarily with brick and mortars. Is that correct? That's correct. Brick and mortar, name on shirt, name on truck, guys. I like that name on shirt, name on truck. Like that is so cool. So Steve, how did you get started in this? I mean, what, you woke up one day and you're like, I know I'm going to help other businesses be phenomenal. <laughs> it actually started back in 1980 when I started my first business. Mm -hmm. And um, we were always the underdog. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raising kids going to, and my competition were like movie stars or TV stars, people that had a ton of money to put into things. Right. Um, we didn't. I was raising kids. I was a regular family guy. So as the internet became a thing, um, we understood that there was an edge there for us. And that's what we like about the online space is that even for a smaller business that may not have the budget, um, mm -hmm. if you're doing the right things in the right order at the right time, you can take out some of these bigger guys or um, either on a national level or the local guy down the street has deeper pockets or has, you know, more partners. There's money come, there's money being driven into the business uh, that they may not be doing the right things, or we can leverage what they're doing. Let's mm -hmm. say they're using Google ads, mm -hmm. we let them do the ad spend, spend their money on Google ads. We come in with reviews and reputation and doing all the other things we need to be done. And then we actually let them drive business to us on their dime. Yeah, that that is so good because a lot of us, like I said, we don't know all the ins and outs of a thing. And I'm sure you probably learned this the super easy way and it just came to you without a problem whatsoever. Right? <laughs> I, I wish. I actually have a team of really smart people behind me mm -hmm. um, that have decades of digital marketing experience. So what we did is I combined their experience in the digital end, 
Mm -hmm. um, my experience in taking underperforming companies and turning them into high performance success stories and put together a really good team that is focused on local business. And when I say local business, um, that is nationally. So uh, I hate the term small business. Oh, um, I, I just, it's a, it's a misnomer. Small business is the backbone of, of our communities, of our country. And yeah. I just think calling them small is not right. They're mm -hmm. the local face of the business. Yeah, I, I, that is so good because you do, you hear small business and you, there is something in you that thinks, okay, small is little, little may not be worth it. Worth it may not be worth my time and money. When in actuality, small business owners, they are grinding. They are making stuff happen out here, right? For I, sure, for sure. And, yeah. and they know their customers. And they know their customers because we're in the community. Mm -hmm. They see us at Walmart and Target all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> and at church and wherever else we hang out at. That's right. That, you know, and you don't think of that. And I like what you said in the 80s when you started. You know, the bigger guys and gals, they had deeper pockets. They had, but there was something missing. So why digital marketing versus some of the other marketing type touch points? What was it about digital that attracted you? So we were, I was very good at marketing just in general, the old, old fashioned stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And it really hasn't changed much only um, with digital. We can reach a lot more people in a shorter period of time um yeah. and some industries are slow to to capitalize on that right mm -hmm. they they go through committees and there's 15 decision makers things never get done right. um, you know, <laughs> the long meeting that could have been an email about something we're never going to get to oh um, my gosh so local business um they they understand the technology. Once we explain how it works, why mm -hmm. it works, how much they should be spending, mm -hmm. it's a pretty clear picture, right? Yeah. And they can understand that we're not going through a ton of decision makers, choosing mm -hmm. an owner, maybe a couple of stakeholders as well. Mm -hmm. And they can come to that decision pretty quickly. Yeah. You, you know, you mentioned all the, the steps and those of us that were in uh, corporate America for years and years and years or work for big, huge companies, we understand that dinosaur and that ship turns extremely slowly. But being a, being a, a small business owner, man, we can make decisions pretty much on a dime. You know, a lot of times our budget is a dime, but that's neither here nor there. So, you know, speaking of budgets, you said people can know what it is they need to spend. In something like this, what is the average amount? And is there such thing as an average amount for a business, depending on its size? There really isn't. So what, what we've done is we've um, developed a three-tier, three-stage strategy mm -hmm. that we customize from there that's tailored to the clients. Um, but we've broken it down following SBA guidelines, which is 5 to 10% of mm -hmm. annual revenue for marketing okay. spend. Mm -hmm. And then we also follow what the big guys do, right? So no matter who we're working with, we always want to follow what those bigger companies are doing. They have the resources to mm -hmm. get rid of trying out what works, right? So right. we just figure out what works from them. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're working on 7% mm -hmm. of annual revenue for digital marketing. Of course, then they have those bigger budgets. So they'll throw another 7% into more traditional marketing methods. Mm -hmm. So we'll go, so with a normal business, we'll go 7% of annual revenue. Okay. Conversely, <laughs> interestingly enough, it also works in those stages mm -hmm. that we've set up to what's needed by those businesses. That's so good. Let's say on the low end of the stage would be maybe their uh, business doing like a hundred grand a year. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to need the real foundational things like Reviews are not in place mm. uh, or not enough of them or we need to work on visibility. We need to work on um, getting social media out there correctly, right. um, making sure that all the all the listings on business listings online are all correct. Those correspond very well with those people at that lower hundred grand level. Mm -hmm. Once you get up to the next level, the second at the second stage, the people there 
have a lot of that in place, but it may need to be fine tuned. Mm-hmm. And that's what we'll start to look at um, getting tightening up the foundation, and then there also allows us to start looking at other options, right, to build visibility, whether that's um, using SEO um, or geofencing if they're a, a, a brick and mortar where people walk into the mm-hmm. walk into at that stage those items start to make sense oh, at the third okay. stage they have all of that basic stuff in place and oh. we're going to take all of those things we're going to add on you know maybe at that point brand omnipresence where we start looking at that's where we start to dominate and no matter where you look for them whether it's video or slide shares or um higher higher authority news sites mm-hmm. their names are coming out and the articles are coming out about them as well while we're still working on that on the ground mm-hmm. for lack of a better way of putting it way of keeping it there right. that's, where the, that's where the dominate comes in mm-hmm. and people want to dominate in their fields but very few of us know how what domination looks like and then you know you you mentioned about the reviews some folks are like, eh, reviews, you can't even trust them anymore. What would you say to that? You can't afford to not have reviews. <laughs> the end. Thank you for coming. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, I don't know what the latest figure on is on it, but it's about 90% mm. of people trust reviews, online reviews, as mm. much as word of mouth a recommendation from somebody. That's true. I read reviews. I'm one of those people. I will go through and I will check them out and and I'll read them. And then you have to kind of take them, though, with a grain of salt because you have these, you know, we have 50,000 five star reviews, but you have four one star reviews. And for some reason, those one star reviews seem to get more attention than those, you know, 50,000 five star reviews. That's so crazy. And they and they should be. They Mm -hmm. should be. And that's Mm -hmm. what I like about reviews. Mm -hmm. So our clients, we're never looking for five we're, we're not looking to be five stars all, all the time it's un, um, if you're doing enough business i mean there are some people out there that do it they have a great they provide great service they've got great staffing the owners are great mm-hmm. it's going to happen right um, but if we can be basically four seven or higher mm-hmm. that's really where we're looking at okay um, the negative reviews don't necessarily kill you it, actually you know like you said it makes it appear a little more real. Yeah. So we're going to go look at those five. So we'll go look at the low reviews, right? I always mm-hmm. do. That's the first thing I'm going to look at. Okay. <laughs> five. Let me see what's what's the worst thing they've said about you so far. And then we look at how long ago it was. And in general, you'll see that um, somebody with a high number of reviews, but mm-hmm. still has some lower ones in there. You'll see right. that it was maybe three years ago or more. Um, so you go, okay, well, obviously... All of us in all of our businesses, things change, sure. we improve, we get better. So mm-hmm. I don't think that I haven't seen anything ne- negative since those last ones that were quite early. I'm, they're not going to worry me. Yeah. So it's important to read the reviews. It's a better business, right? Right. Right. They've, they've taken what's wrong and they've made some improvements to mm-hmm. clarity because that's what the reviews are showing. That's what, and, and so like you just, you literally just said, it's important to read the reviews, but read them as you would like study something, see when it was last done, see what has improved, see if there's been anything negative within the last whatever, because uh, shame on me. I just read them. I, I rarely even look at the dates on them. Oh, I got to do better. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do better. That's crazy. So you said that you work with mostly brick and mortar, local businesses nationwide. I like that. What does that mean? So you work with anybody across the country that would be considered a local business? How how do you define that? Pretty much just the way you said it. Okay. (laughs) Is uh, really clear. So um, if you, so I know sometimes people get a bit confused with the brick and mortar Mm -hmm. statement. I don't know why, but it it does happen. So brick and mortar is a business that people walk into. Mm -hmm. So if they come through your door, that's where we can get you more. Okay. I like that. Come through your door. We can get you more. That being said, Steve, if someone wanted to work with you or at least continue this conversation, where's the best place for them to reach you? Best place is our website. That's S is in Sam, E is in Echo, O is in Oscar, 
SEO727.com. SEO727.com. I love it. And don't worry, y'all, if you didn't get that, all of his contact information will be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share our content as well. It means everything to us. Steve, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. <laughs> all right. So this game is called This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, sir? I'm ready to play. All right, let's do this. iPhone or Android? iPhone. All right, yellow light, speed up or slow down? Speed up. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that, but thank you for your honesty, sir. <laughs> Michael Jackson or Prince? Prince. Really? I don't know why I would see you as a Michael Jackson fan. I don't know. Oh, well. Batman or Superman? Yeah. I'm going to give my age away here, but I'm going to say Batman. Whatever your age away. Batman's my favorite. What, what does that mean? Give your age away because Batman's older than Superman? Seems Whatever. like to me. Well, no, I guess Superman's older. So it, I know, right? So, yeah. so technically we're Superman. younger. I like it. <laughs> okay. When you meet somebody, what's the first thing you notice? Their eyes or their smile? Smile, eyes, smile and eyes. Okay. Both. I like it. All right. What water park or amusement park? water park really yeah. again i would think that you're more of the amusement <laughs> park guy i don't know what's going on with me all right eat to live or live to eat uh eat to live okay um reality tv yes please or i just can't just can't me neither i just i don't understand it but i'm not i'm not mad all right dressing up or dressing down i am definitely a dressing down guy <laughs> awesome fry it or grill it man that's a tough one <laughs> i'll go grill uh, oh is that your that's the healthy option that you should say that kind of thing uh no i was i was thinking barbecue grill oh okay <gasps> you were thinking good. grilling like healthy. i was yeah Shame on me. <laughs> I like that so much. Okay. Let me see. Um, I like sports or I don't care. I like sports. Okay. Super Bowl, the game or the commercials? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depends on the game. Sometimes exactly. the commercials are better. Yeah. Who's your team, by the way? 49ers. Ah, in Florida? I'm not here from where not from here originally. Not from around here. I got it. Okay. And finally, Steve, what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? Unbelievable to you this right now, but you're going to be talking to Ricky Smith someday. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he's going to be like, who? Whatever. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you're going to know. That's right. Steve, thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ricky. This was, a, this was a load of fun. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. And thank you all for watching. That's it for this week. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Mm -hmm.